The purpose of the meshing module in 3D Slicer is to provide an interactive end-to-end -end workflow from source imagery to the creation, evaluation, improvement of volumetric meshes. Then the meshes can be exported for external solving in a finite element solver such as Abacus. The purpose of this tutorial is to look at the quality tab for how we can display and improve the quality of a mesh once it has been created. This is the mesh that was created by importing a model from 3D Slicer. So let's view it by clicking Evaluate Display. And we are given several metrics we can choose from. One of them uh, often used is the Jacobian. And this metric here, when, once we pick a metric, we see a vertical scale with the name of the metric and then the values, uh, value range that the elements have. And here's the coloring of the elements according to those the scalar values of that metric at that particular element. This is a high quality mesh already because the minimum Jacobian value is still positive. So all these elements are positive Jacobian, which means this metric is relatively stable numerically. Um, so it's worth noting that the use of a model imported from a label map and used through the interactive building blocks can create a high quality mesh even with this intuitive process. Let's look a little bit more closely at the, at the quantitative values by clicking the summary report button. And we see that this mesh has 2322 elements and none are distorted, which means there are no negative Jacobian values. And our average Jacobian is just a little over one, 1 1.006. Let's try to improve that by using the mesh improvement. So we'll close this tab, we'll go to the next entry, mesh improvement. We're given a choice of interpolation types, whether it's elliptical or transfinite. We'll do elliptical. We'll set five iterations, and we'll smooth the mesh. After a little while, the algorithm completes, and let's go see the results. Display mesh quality. Go to Jacobian. Let's take a look at our summary report. OK, there are still no distorted elements and the average value of a Jacobian across the elements of the mesh is higher. So here we were able to iteratively improve the quality of the mesh just by going to that mesh improvement, coming back and taking a look at it here. Let me show you as well another visual cue that we can look at the interior elements by selecting this cutting plane right here. And then we can just drag the cutting plane interactively and look at what Look at the interior elements of the mesh. This gives us a way to, to examine the quality of the mesh in detail, both visually and quantitatively through the summary report. In addition to the Jacobian, there are several other values, other metrics. One of the most useful is the edge collapse, which indicates visually and quantitatively if the edge of one element if the edge of the element has collapsed. So if nodes are coincident, um, it's flagged with this one. There's also an angle out of bounds metric, which indicates here by color, by unsuitability, if any of the angles of the hexahedron are either less than 45 degrees or what greater than 135 degrees. So here's an example where we can produce a summary report and show some elements that have an either very small or very large angle. Um, so this is a way we can now take a look at this, maybe go back to mesh improvement and further improve the quality of the mesh. So through this iterative process here, it makes it easy to see, preview, and improve mesh quality, which ends up saving a lot of time because the user does not have to go back and wait for a mesh to fail in the final element solver later on. And this is a review of the mesh quality viewing and improvement tabs in the meshing viewer for Slicer.